This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days at www.dashlane.com slash infographics and never forget another password and keep all your online accounts secure. A certain amount of mystery still surrounds what has become known as the dark web. The very name evokes images of an underworld, a kind of catacomb where scoundrels hide out and human depravity awaits us around every corner. But research has shown that the dark web is perhaps not as dark as many of us imagine. Yes, one can certainly go to this place and acquire a handful of illegal substances, and yes, if a person so chooses, they can scour the dark web and find images that most of the world would find repellent. But let's just say you won't find hitmen for hire all over the dark web, nor as much video violence than we might have thought. The question is though, who on earth came up with this idea in the first place? We've been through this in other shows, so we'll make it short, and we're talking about what the dark web actually is. You see, the internet as most of us know it, the bit you're using right now, is only a small part of the web. Sources don't agree on how much, but it's said the part of the web that we can access using ordinary browsers is only about 10% of the entire thing. You can also find sources that say it's 4% or even 1%. Still, it's thought there are about 1.8 billion active websites on the net, although again you can find sources that give a different number, much higher sometimes. This doesn't of course mean that the rest of the web is the dark web and full of dark marketplaces, otherwise we might have cause for concern. What it means is that the rest of the web, which we'll call the deep web, is used by private companies, governments, etc. It's invisible to you. Well, it is if you can't hack into it or are not actively legally using it. Think about your email, online banking, company servers. These aren't exactly searchable on the web, so of course the deep web is way bigger than the navigable web. Ok, so you understand that. What about the dark web? This is a place within the deep web that's also hidden but can be accessed using something called the Tor browser. You can use this browser along with a VPN or a virtual private network to access the dark web. You might do this if you're an activist and want anonymity, such as people that criticize governments whose modus operandi shows no mercy for political dissidents. But you might also enter the dark web so you can access what are sometimes called dark sites. Here's where you might find someone selling serotonin enhancing pills by the bagful or ounces of white powder, where you might find hackers for hire or someone to chat with about your strange predilection for drinking your own blood by the wine glass. As we said, the dark web might not be as demonic as movies or some politicians depict, but you can read stories in the British press about how the young generation now buy their illicit substances there more than in the streets these days, or how some people were arrested by the FBI for distributing images that 99.9% .9 of viewers would find disturbing. Ok, you get the picture, but now you must be thinking, if this stuff goes on, why would anyone in their right mind have created it in the first place? Well, to answer that, we must look to the US military. Let's remember that the internet itself was a byproduct of military technologies, as was much of the technology we take for granted today. It was in the mid-1990s that the US wanted their intelligence operatives to have a place, a virtual place, where they could communicate with total anonymity. They started working on something called TOR, an acronym that stands for the Onion Router. But why give this to the people? Wasn't that just madness? According to the BBC, the military did this because if more people were using it, then it would be harder to spot the activity of operatives among all the other noise. Foreign policy dives even deeper into the history of the dark web, and here we'll summarize. In 1969, a student at the University of California sent a message between computers connected by ARPANET. This was the beginning of the web as we know it, and it was developed by the Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. In the next few years, more computers started connecting with each other on secret networks, and these were sometimes called dark nets. This might not sound like much to you, but it was a breakthrough in secret communications. Then we see the internet explode in the ensuing decades. Only part of this internet is a haven for illegal activity. In the 1990s, we saw a lot of illegal file sharing, and we're told this set off a tsunami of darknet activity. The people sharing the files were using data havens that couldn't be shut down by the authorities. So even before the dark web as we know it today, there was still a hidden part of the internet. 
Then in March 2000, we saw the release of something called Freenet. This is a place you could access with anonymity and get your hands on files, legal or illegal. Freenet is a near-perfect anarchy, the Irish creator proudly told the New York Times. You see, it wasn't about sharing and distributing dodgy content, but some people felt that there should be a place in the internet free from censorship and the prying eyes of the government. What we're trying to say is that long before Tor, people were trying to create room in the internet where people could operate without being surveilled. Then in 2002, we got Tor to protect those American operatives, but it only took a few years for sites accessible through Tor to become filled with copyrighted material from Hollywood movies to versions of Microsoft Office. It became a trading ground for illicit material, and people loved it because they could go there with the assurance that they wouldn't get arrested. Imagine buying stolen goods on the street, but having the superpower to become invisible. Things heated up in 2009 when a guy that called himself Satoshi Nakamoto mined the first bit. Bitcoin, a virtual currency that was untraceable. Now you can launder cash, spend your Bitcoin inside the darknet. It was a marriage made in heaven. In 2011, we saw the first modern darknet marketplace in the Silk Road, named after ancient trading routes in Asia. There you could find an array of legal and illegal goods and services, but it only lasted short of two years and the creator was eventually sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole. But as Wired pointed out in 2015, it's not as if everyone using Tor is accessing the dark web. In fact, the number is quite small, and though you can find illegal things there, you can also find them on the regular web. Most people sharing illegal images or videos use the normal web, not the dark web. According to Wired, whose writer researched the dark web for a number of years, yes, you can find depravity there, but it's also full of doctors giving advice they might not give out in the open. It's a place where people can talk and not worry about their careers, where others can talk about a disease they have that they dare not talk about out in the open. And as we said, it's used by a lot of people who need to discuss issues in a country that would likely lock them up for discussing those issues. This includes some people inside the USA who would rather not have their words watched. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden famously said that the government was working hard to anonymize Tor users, but it wasn't always successful. We always know that the FBI has had some success finding criminal activity there, but these are usually sting operations, not just pinpointing a person after a share or sale. We say this because some of you might be asking why the government hasn't gone to greater lengths to close us all down. There are many reasons, but one is that it's still useful in terms of the greater good. Two is that the governments of the world have shown that when things get murky in the dark web, then authorities will swoop. It's not impenetrable. You might have some anonymity, but you're not a ghost. You're merely wearing a sheet over your head. The US government supports the dark web and funds it because, as we said, it's useful. At the same time, it's not easy to take down a decentralized network. There isn't an off switch. This network is spread across the globe and protected by strong cryptography. It's almost like ether, or a living, breathing entity whose plexus of veins are threaded throughout the world. You might also ask yourself what would happen if somehow Tor wasn't available, if somehow part of the dark web was blacked out. Would the darkness disappear? No, it wouldn't. It would appear somewhere else. The government has shut down darknet sites, and rightly so, but more will just pop up. The government could try and get rid of the Tor browser, but as we said, it has no reason for doing this. China actually has been successful in blocking the Tor browser, but other governments have failed. This is what Motherboard says about blocking the browser. Governments can block access to VPN services by blocking access from IP addresses linked to VPN providers. Blocking Tor is more complex and requires identifying and blocking the destination nodes traffic travels through, rather than the URL or IP address. Most governments that allow more or less free speech agree that of the 2.5 million Tor users, very few of them are doing nefarious things in the dark web. Believe it or not, sellers in the dark web agreed in 2018 to stop selling the powerful and deadly opioid fentanyl. Many operators agreed that it was just too dangerous, and perhaps they also knew that it would no doubt bring unwanted attention to their marketplaces. In conclusion, the dark web, like any street in any town, does contain some rather unethical people, but for the most part, what you see there is just innocent folks protecting their identity. It would be crazy for any government to try and close their entire park just because some guys sell their substances there at night in the back corner. But if things get too bad, you can be assured someone will go after them. Meanwhile, the rest of the people that use this park for late-night anonymous chats can do so without harassment.
However the dark web started, it's here to stay, which means that you better have some serious protection against anyone who's looking to exploit it for nefarious purposes. Don't forget, you are their target. We at the Infographics Show have been keeping ourselves protected using Dashlane. Dashlane is the one and only tool you need to not just keep your personal info and digital accounts safe and secure, but their dark web monitoring services will immediately notify you if it finds any of your personal information for sale on an online marketplace, so you can take steps to protect yourself right away. Don't be like millions of victims. Get Dashlane and keep your digital life secure right now. Head on over to dashlane.com slash infographics for a free 30-day trial. And if you use the coupon code infographics, you can get 10% off a premium subscription today. Do you agree with this? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other show, Why You Should Never Visit the Dark Web. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.